in at number 10. Let's talk about Daddy05, who thinks it's funny to prank their kids. I didn't do that! What the hell is that? What the hell is, is that? Both of the parents were in on this prank, and they thought it would be funny to yell at their son, saying, what the heck did you do? What did you do to the carpet? The kid was totally distraught. He was freaking out. Well, there are many of these types of emotionally damaging videos on Daddy O5's YouTube channel. Well, the couple was found guilty of two counts of child neglect. They appeared in court and entered an Elford plea. So they were given a sentence of five years of probation. This actually made headline news. Cry hysterically. <laughs> And the videos racked up millions of views. But the youngest two are Heather Martin's stepchildren. Now their biological mom has come forward, releasing her own video with her lawyer, announcing that Michael and Heather Martin have lost custody and the children are now in her care. I feel really bad for these kids who were just taken advantage of in this situation. They're so young and they don't really know what's going on. Let's move on to number nine, we have Sam Pepper. Sam Pepper has had a very controversial YouTube career. Over the years, he has been accused of rape, sexual assault by multiple women. Sam Pepper is also a prankster who has been seen often in his YouTube videos harassing women on the streets. And most of his videos take place in Los Angeles. And he had a fake arm that looked like his hand was in his pocket, but then with his real hand, he would ask women's questions to distract them and then reach over and grab their butts. Is this real life right now? Why is this even a prank? I, I don't see where the prank is here. Sam Pepper wasn't the smartest because he filmed himself committing a crime and he uploaded it onto YouTube for everyone to see. Back in 2014, an eight year old woman filed an incident report with the Los Angeles Police Department alleging that Sam Pepper raped her. Apparently, the evidence wasn't compelling enough, so he wasn't arrested for that. While well, in 2016, Sam Pepper broke into an abandoned building and a police officer drove by and they noticed people inside of it. Sam Pepper took off, he tried to run away from the police so the officer pulled beside Sam Pepper and this is what happened and this cop car just is screeching up behind us he's got his gun out the window like this literally like in a movie he's got his gun out his window like this he's driving with this hand gun in this hand get the f on the floor get the f on the floor now. I really do feel bad for this next person at number eight, but I, I don't know if to feel bad or not. Well, we're talking about Mona Lisa Perez, and she's from Minnesota, who accidentally shot her 22-year-old boyfriend. I don't know if you remember this, it was all over the news. Her boyfriend is Pedro Reuse the third, and on his YouTube video, which got shut down, but it's been re-uploaded by other channels, so you can see some of this video still. I'm not sure why it's still up on YouTube, but in the video, you can see Mona Lisa holding a gun to her boyfriend while he was holding holding a book in front of him. They both believed that the bullets, there's a possibility that the bullet may not go through the book. Well, let me show you guys the moments before the tragedy. Just wanna see if a 50 caliber bullet can go through a book. I just wanna see if a 50 caliber bullet can go through a book. I mean, isn't that common sense? Why wouldn't a bullet be able to go through a book? It, it's proven to go through people, through concrete. I'm very confused right now, and why did he want to see if the bullet would go through the book and stand behind the book? How about, uh, let's see if the bullet goes through the book, but uh, let's, I don't want to be behind it. The ultimate, the ultimate test to see if this 50 caliber bullet will go through a book is, I'm just not gonna just set it and just shoot it, no. I'm going to stand behind it. Is this real life right now? This is the stupidest built with four freaking O's. I don't know what this guy is thinking, but he, he knew it was stupid and he did it anyways. Trustworthy person that I trust in this world is my girlfriend, Mona Lisa. So, so if I'm gonna die, I'm pretty much ready to go to heaven right now. Mona Lisa pleaded guilty to second degree manslaughter. She was sentenced to prison and she was also banned from owning firearms for life or collecting payments for her story. Meaning she's not allowed to receive any money if you know if some idiot decides to raise money for her, they feel bad for her. This is just a dumb situation that didn't need to result in death. Moving on to number seven, we have Trisha Paytas. I, I went to jail 
And um, Mama's out now, Mama's okay, but I was in YouTube jail for a week. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. She actually wasn't in jail. It was a prank that she played. So actually in number seven, we have Omos Yi from Singapore, who is a teenage vlogger. Well, in one of his videos, he's talking about how Lee Kuan Yew was dead and he was actually happy about it. Well, who is Lee Kuan Yew? Well, he was the prime minister of Singapore. Because of what he was saying in the video, he was arrested and charged. His bail was set at $20,000 and if he's convicted, he could be facing three years in jail. This became controversial because people believe in freedom of speech. Not too long ago, NBA star Anis Kanter tweeted out negative things about the Turkish government and now the Turkish government sent out an arrest warrant so now he can't even go back to his own country. If he goes, he's going to have to serve jail time. How much time? I don't know. And it's just because of something he tweeted out. So I guess freedom of speech is there, but you can't really say whatever you want, can you? So is there really freedom of speech these days? I don't know. I'll let you guys decide. Number six, let's talk about Troll Station. There's four members of this channel who was involved in fake robberies, kidnappings, and this all took place in 2015. The channel had almost one million subscribers at the time, and they've even done bomb hoaxes as well, which is just so stupid. 20 year old Enrit, 23 year old Helder Gomes, 27 year old Daniel Jarvis, and 29 year old Ebenezer Menza all pleaded guilty to two counts of using threatening, abusive, and insulting words or behaviors with intent to cause fear or provoke unlawful violence. They didn't get much time. I'm pretty sure it was like a month. It was like four weeks or something like that. But hopefully with that jail time, it taught them a lesson. It seems like a ton of prank channels have dealt with the law and has been sent to jail. Well, it's time to do it for the Vine. Okay, that is something I haven't heard in, in such a long time. Well, at number five, we have Cameron Dallas, who did it for the Vine. Okay, not really. I, I don't think he did it for the Vine. But he is a Viner. Hey. Some of y'all really need Jesus. Can I get an ow? Well, he got himself arrested. Cameron decided to throw an insane party because why not? He's young, he's a YouTuber, he's making money. Well, things got out of hand and police were called. Well, the police settled things down and they left. Well, they were called back again. And this time when they showed up, there was a paint can thrown out the window. It was a sixth floor window. And the paint can almost hit a woman. I'm assuming that's the woman that called the police. Well, there was paint just everywhere. Cameron was arrested on charges of a felony of vandalism and he was held in $20,000 bail. At number four, we have Cali Muscle, a guy that I've actually made a video with not too long ago. I'm not sure if you guys remember it. Well, Cali Muscle we know as this like really big YouTuber. Well, big as in like a lot of views and big as in like muscles. This guy is like beast. Well, did you guys know that he served hard time? Well, I guess for you guys who are fans of him, you guys know about it because he does talk about it a lot. Well, Cali Muscle is a bodybuilder who is originally from Oakland, California. And when he was younger, he took the wrong path in life. He got into a ton of trouble with the law. Not too long after the death of his brother, Cali Muscle found himself behind bars after an armed robbery. He spent 11 years in prison. He moved around from prison to prison and he spent seven years in San Quentin prison Which is a pretty tough prison He would train daily in prison to build up his muscles into you know what they are today. This guy is a total beast Glorify prison jail None of that because for me truthfully it was a waste of 11 years But I'm here to say you better find another way and I did it. Kelly Muscle truly has a very inspiring story and now he has a very positive outlook on life. And now he's making money the right way. I highly recommend you guys check out the Cali Muscle story. It's a video on his YouTube channel. It's called Monster, the Cali Muscle story. I'll link to it down below. And uh, you guys should go over to his newest videos and put hashtag most amazing top 10 sent me here. Let's give him a shout out. Number three. For the first time ever, you're about to hear the 23-year-old confess to Texas Rangers how he killed his parents and older brother in cold blood. I just don't understand how people are capable of doing such a thing. Back in 2012, when Sessler was 23 years old, he murdered his parents and brother before attempting a mass shooting at Waller High School. This is the same high school he attended. This guy's YouTube channel is Lenscap Productions. He posts anime, gaming reviews, there were some videos of his brother and his pets. As his YouTube videos went on, he started to introduce guns, first comedy skits and demonstrations. Sessler has confessed to everything and when he was asked, why did he do it? Why did he kill his family? And he had an answer to that. He said, 
He wanted to spare his family with what he was about to do, which was becoming a school mass shooting. Things are about to get even worse. Number two, we have school shooter Pekka Eric Evjanen. He went by the username on YouTube as Thermgeist89 and Natural Selector89. He actually uploaded videos onto his YouTube channel about school shootings and violent acts, including the Columbine High School massacre and the Tokyo subway attack, and even had videos of the bombing during the Iraq invasion. Back on November 7th, 2007, Pekka Avinen entered Jokela High School in Jokela, which is located in a town in Tuzla, Finland. The kid was just 18 years old when he entered the school, armed with a semi-automatic pistol. He killed eight people, and there was another person who was wounded after they got shot in the toe. He then turned the gun on himself and tried to take his own life. Pekka survived his own gunshot. He was rushed to the hospital. Later that evening, he actually died in the hospital. This was the second school shooting in the history of Finland. The previous shooting was back in 1989. I'm not sure how you even top that one, but uh, finally at number one, we have the mass murderer, Elliot Roger. Hi, Elliot Roger here. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. The day in which I will have my revenge against humanity. What is he talking about? Well, in the video, he's talking about how he's trying to kill as many people as possible because he has lived a life of loneliness and he mentions that no girl would give him attention. I mean, this kid is 22 years old. I wouldn't be too worried about that. I mean, this is just insane. But this sick guy decided to try and kill as many female blonde girls as possible. The day after he filmed this video, he did exactly what he said in the video. He went into the University of California and he opened fire. Just before he did that, he sat people in an apartment. He killed six people, injured 14 others before killing himself inside of his vehicle. The victims were ages 19 to 22 years old. Elliot uploaded his last ever video onto YouTube and he titled it Elliot Rogers Retribution. After uploading the video, he emailed a lengthy autobiographical manuscript to some of his acquaintance, his therapist, and several family members as well. The document was titled My Twisted World, The Story of Elliot Rogers. It then became available online and now it's known as his manifesto. In it, he's talking about family conflicts, his struggles in life, especially his childhood, and as he grew older, he gained a hatred for women. He didn't like interracial couples. This guy was just sick, simply said. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Nikki and Dan Filippi. I don't know if that's how you say the last name. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of you are not surprised to see this couple on today's list considering their recent scandal. Just a few weeks ago, the couple uploaded a video where they explained that they had euthanized their nine-year-old bull terrier named Bowser because the dog had bit their young son, Logan. This is of course a terrible situation, but the details surrounding it are what has people freaking out. The couple explained that Bowser didn't attack Logan but that he bit him because Logan was trying to take away his food. The pair also explained how Logan wasn't seriously injured, he just had a mark, but also how Logan had previously hurt the dog's ear just prior to this incident, and that encounter left the dog with a scar. The couple also took a photo shoot with Bowser before putting him down that included Logan being right next to him, so Logan obviously wasn't afraid of Bowser, and Bowser clearly wasn't afraid of or aggressive towards Logan. Nikki and Dan also explained that they had contacted the Humane Society about rehoming the dog, to which the Humane Society said that they couldn't, but when contacted, the Humane Society said that no interaction ever took place. To end off their weird video, the couple said that while they loved Bowser, it had become difficult to care for him once they had their son. They also said that they were planning to move soon and already had begun to have conversations about what to do with Bowser, since there's a lot that goes into transporting him. So all in all, this situation is very, very sad and pretty messed up. I don't know if any actual crime took place in this situation, but it definitely feels a little sketchy to me personally. Also, it's come to light that in 2018, the couple were meant to adopt a baby from Thailand, but called off the adoption when they realized that there was a law from the Thai government that would prohibit them from posting the baby on social media for a year. I'm not gonna comment on that one and instead just Leave that information for you guys to take as you will. 
In our number nine spot today, we have Call Me Carson. Call Me Carson is known for his YouTube channel and his gaming Twitch streams. At the beginning of the year on January 4th, allegations came to light that Carson was allegedly sending inappropriate messages and photos to girls. There were two separate Twitter accounts who came forward with these allegations, and one of them was even able to provide screenshots of the interactions. After news of this spread, in one week alone, he lost over 300,000 subscribers, and ever since then, he has remained off of social media and hasn't made any public addresses, as far as I know. It is unclear if there is any kind of criminal investigation happening. In our number eight spot today, we have Minilad. Minilad was a super popular YouTuber and Twitch streamer with over five million subscribers, but the beginning of the YouTuber's controversy began a few years ago when old tweets of his resurfaced. These tweets featured both racial slurs as well as homophobic remarks. Unfortunately though, the controversy didn't end there. Last year in 2020, two women spoke out about how he had manipulated them when he was in his 20s and they were only teenagers, which of course means that they were underage. Shortly after this, his ex-girlfriend also spoke out saying that their relationship was extremely toxic and very manipulative. He apologized on Twitter and said he was taking a break from social media and attending therapy, but when he returned to YouTube in August of last year, his videos were met with a ton of negative feedback, as a few months of course cannot undo what these people were accused him of. He released a few more apology videos, but as of last year, he hasn't posted an upload. He has made his intention to return to YouTube clear though, as he stated he would when he thought the time was right. In our number seven spot today, we have T. Martin 2. T. Martin 2 is an American YouTuber who's known for his gaming videos, but he fell into some trouble back in 2016. Him, along with another YouTuber, began to promote a gambling website. The pair promoted it, saying that they had just found it and really enjoyed it, so they encouraged their audience audience to go and check it out as well. Well, as we all well know, nothing gets past cyber sleuths as they found out that this gambling website the pair supposedly just stumbled upon was actually co-owned by them. People were of course super outraged at this and his channel's views began to decline until he just stopped uploading on the channel altogether. I don't necessarily think he should be in jail, but not disclosing the ownership of the business he was promoting was technically a crime, so he definitely needed to be on this list today. In our number six spot today, we have That Vegan Teacher. This one is a bit of an exaggeration on my part, and I don't think she's done anything that's really a jailable offense, but she's still doing some extremely questionable things. That Vegan Teacher first came under fire when she said she wasn't going to donate her organs after she passed away because she didn't want any meat eaters to have them. Not only does that seem a little dramatic, but it truly seems like something she could have just kept to herself. She is known for her replies to anyone who has anything bad to say about her or her content and has even been accused of stalking someone she had internet drama with, but I'm not sure how true that one is. Her TikTok came under fire when she said that coming out as vegan is more special than someone who is a part of the LGBTQIA community coming out, which is obviously not true considering vegans aren't a marginalized group and also literally no one cares about your diet. She also controversially feeds her dog Bella a vegan diet as well, and there's the hashtag save Bella the dog, and even a petition on change.org about it. The final straw for a lot of people on her wild internet escapades started in March of this year when she uploaded a video saying that she should be able to say the n-word because she should be able to reclaim the word. Just to be clear, that word is not hers to reclaim. She also made a video where she had a black doll that she gave six one word compliments to, which she also wrote out to form an acrostic poem of the slur. The good news is that she was banned from TikTok and even after making more accounts a few more times, they took those ones down too. In our number five spot today, we have EDP445. EDP445 is a former YouTuber who is known for his love of the Eagles football team and also for his rant videos. His initial rise to popularity was within the sports community, but he began to branch out and started making different kinds of videos like gaming or cooking or sometimes just vlogs. He ended up making appearances on Comedy Central, MTV, ESPN, and a bunch of other networks for his content, but just at the peak of his success, things really took a dark turn. In July of 2020, he released a video where he was attempting to clear 
clear up rumors that he had been voice chatting with minors. People didn't think much of this, but then in October, another YouTuber called Cold Raven uploaded a video that showed proof of these messages and showed even further grotesque conduct. In December, in a video, he actually said he didn't care about the law and then went even further to say something that I don't feel comfortable repeating. In April of this year, two YouTubers who specialize in hunting predators set up a sting where they caught and confronted him. Shortly after this, he deleted all of his YouTube videos and a few days after that, YouTube terminated his accounts. Legal action has not yet been taken, but authorities have confirmed that an investigation is underway. Unfortunately, that sting operation by the YouTubers has made the investigation significantly harder, but let's all hope that they can gather all the necessary evidence and ensure justice is served. In our number four spot today, we have Hate the State. Hate the State is one of the smaller YouTubers on this list, but he still hit the milestone of 22,000 subscribers. This year, he actually did end up getting arrested though. There have been rumors of what he got arrested for since March of 2019, but everything really came to fruition just recently. He was apparently arrested because he was stalking a woman who very obviously didn't want to talk to him. He would send her unwanted messages and voicemails where he would talk about how he just wanted to love her, and he also threatened to kill everyone she wants if he doesn't get the attention he's seeking. And he even sent a dead cat to her doorstep, which is just a terrible sign. Unfortunately, he also somehow convinced a fan to fall under the same creepy spell, and this person also began to harass this poor woman. This is one on this list where they should be in jail, but thankfully they actually are. This YouTuber ended up getting sentenced to five years and the fan will be serving 44 months. I can't imagine how terrifying that must have been for that young woman and I hope when the jail sentences are up there are steps put in place in order to keep them away from her and keep her safe. In our number three spot today we have Maximilian Muse. Maximilian was a popular Call of Duty troll YouTuber who a lot of people know for his little meme comment thing he did in 2018. Earlier this year in February, Critical released a video where he exposed Max for some downright horrific things, many of which I actually cannot repeat here today. Included in the video was manipulation, encouraging his fans to dox people or release people's personal details on the internet, or harassing and bullying other content creators. He would get his fans to go to other people's streams, whether they were large or small, and say homophobic and racist things to try and get them banned. Unfortunately, these aren't even the worst things. The place where the most deplorable acts took place were usually on Discord. There were a few times on calls where he took advantage of vulnerable people and made them do things that I'm sure they would not have normally done, and he would regularly have to delete Discord servers because of the images that were being shared, which would get anyone sent to jail. So you can imagine what that is. This is just the tip of the iceberg with this one, and somehow his channel is both still up and has close to 1.5 million subscribers. It's just one of those cases where you just aren't sure how. In our number two spot today, we have Artem S. Okay, so I actually wasn't able to find the YouTube account that was connected with this horrifying incident, but one of the three men involved was named Artem S. Artem began dating a 30-year-old mother of three after her split from her husband. Unfortunately, Artem and his friends decided to do something absolutely unthinkable one night, all in an attempt to make money on a live stream. The men drugged this woman and began destroying her apartment all for small donations on the stream. They said for every donation they would do more damage, which included ripping off doors, smashing toilets, breaking a fridge, and dishware. This was not all though, as they also violently attacked this woman as well on this live stream, all while laughing about it. The woman's family allegedly tracked down Artem and the other perpetrators and gave them a taste of their own medicine before passing the footage along to authorities who are now doing an investigation. It's hard to believe that people can do atrocious things like this, and it's also hard to believe that there are people who will watch and donate. In our number one spot today, we have Stas Reflay. Stas Reflay is a Russian streamer who did the absolute unthinkable last year on a live stream. He was offered a thousand US dollars to lock his girlfriend Valentina outside in the freezing cold. Unfortunately, he decided to do this and things really escalated. 
Valentina ended up passing away due to hypothermia after being left outside. He continued the live stream even after he had discovered what happened to her, and it saw him calling the paramedics, them showing up and pronouncing her dead, and then apparently he continued on for another two hours after that. Even while all of this was going on, he continued to update the people watching this stream instead of focusing on what actually really mattered in that moment. There were also apparently signs of trauma on her as well that would suggest he had hit her before locking her out in the cold. We have Borgia Escalona. Borgia Escalona is a YouTuber who had quite an issue earlier this year in 2021. For some reason, he decided it would be a good idea to head out and try to play a trick on people where he wore a razor and pretended to cut people's hair. I'm not exactly sure why this even happened at all in the first place, but things quickly took a dark turn. When he approached a person with the razor, the person pushed him away, which is honestly a very fair reaction, and this caused the razor to fall to the ground and break. After this, he chased this guy around saying that he should pay for the razor, and this is when he decided it would be a good idea to pick up and throw the razor at him. He ended up missing and actually hit a woman passing by in the face instead. She ended up suffering a fracture in her nose from this incident. I do believe that it was just an accident, but it's just a picture-perfect example of exactly what not to do. In our number 9 spot today, we have Exerbia. Exerbia is a British YouTuber who is now located in Bulgaria, but has an ongoing investigation out of the Netherlands. He used to co-host a podcast with an artist who is also autistic called Photo and Grime. Photo and Grime filed a multitude of complaints against Exerbia for different physical violent acts as well as blackmail and harassment. After these allegations came to light, an investigation was of course launched by the Dutch police. He has never addressed any of it publicly except for when he deleted comments on his own subreddit about the incident, which I believe speaks volumes. He also ended up being banned from the thread, which which is definitely for the best. The police investigation is actually still ongoing since 2017 because of the fact that he has yet to turn himself in, which again, truly says a lot. In our number eight spot today, we have Gaga Stodgels. Gaga Stodgels is a YouTuber from Serbia whose channel has actually been shut down for a while and for a very good reason. In 2018, a news outlet reported on a video where he was seen harming a goat. In the video, he is saying some pretty disgusting things about what he would like to do to the goat, and while that action in and of itself is not illegal, it sure is creepy and weird, and the rest of the video is illegal. Apparently, he also had a Facebook page where he would document all of the things he would do to the animal as well, and honestly, I thought I had some annoying people on Facebook, but this one certainly takes the cake. He is definitely the type of person you instantly delete. You guys, harming animals is bad enough enough, but just to add an extra layer, this person was also working at a childcare center all while uploading these horrifying things. There haven't been any accusations as far as the children go, which is really good news, but it's just so chilling to think of someone who's doing these types of things being around children. In our number seven spot today, we have Kara the Wolf. Carol the Wolf, whose real name is Joshua Hoffman, is a furry YouTuber who initially rose to fame when he was interviewed by Shane Dawson a few years ago. Since this interview, however, both Shane and Carol have had their fair share of controversy, but in today's video, we are only talking about Carol. He ended up being exposed for his behavior towards his dog, Coda, and potentially other animals as well. He was silent for a while and paused his uploads while there was a criminal investigation into this matter. Unfortunately, however, the silence didn't last forever because Caro uploaded a video in March of 2021 where he deleted any and all negative comments and disabled the like to dislike ratio. In the video, he would admit to his wrongdoings and explained that there was not enough evidence for the police to lay any official charges against him. In our number six spot today, we have Onision. Onision, whose real name is James Jackson, is an American YouTuber and honestly guys, are you even surprised he's on this list today? I can't go into a ton of specific detail about everything he did because we would be here for way too long, as well as the fact that some of the things he said are just things I cannot repeat on this channel. He has been exposed for harming women, both mentally and otherwise. He has been accused of being a pre for harming animals, and honestly, the list unfortunately goes on. Even Chris Hansen has made attempts to intervene, which obviously says a lot. He actually said that he would be quitting YouTube and Twitter, but as of making this video, his most recent upload was only one week ago. In our number five spot today, we have Daddy05. 
Daddy05, whose real name is Michael Christopher Martin, is an American YouTuber who I'm sure a lot of you have heard of, but for less than great reasons. This channel would see Michael and his wife along with Michael's children. It was a vlog type channel that quickly turned quite grim. The youngest child in the family is named Cody and he would often get pretty brutally bullied by his family members and it truly was hard to watch. In the video, which I think may have been the final straw for the people who watched the channel, was a video where Michael pranked Cody into believing that he had made a mess on the carpet. Cody is visibly so scared and so traumatized that he begins to cry, at which point Michael begins screaming at him, which would of course only further the terror that Cody was of course feeling. Now Cody and his sister have moved in with their biological mother, where I hope that they are both much safer and that they have been able to heal from all of the things they endured at their dad's house. In our number four spot today, we have Shay. Shay is a YouTuber from Brazil who also used to be an esports player. Randomly, she was also in charge of running the public ministry of Sao Paulo's online retail store. You might be wondering why that is relevant, but just wait. Between 2013 and 2017, it was alleged that she scammed a total of 118 customers who tried purchasing items at this online store. Shay has said that it was due to bad administration and that there were many other items and customers that had no issue at all. She did end up being arrested and tried, and in a pretty crazy turn of events, in March of 2020, she was actually sentenced to 116 years in prison, which most definitely seems exceptionally extreme and unnecessary. Her lawyers of course appealed it immediately. She remains outside of jail currently and is still very active on social media. If she really did scam people, she probably should see some sort of punishment for that, especially considering she's not struggling financially, but I don't think 116 years in jail is exactly reasonable for a crime of this size. In our number three spot today, we have I'm J Station. I'm J Station is a Canadian YouTuber who is no stranger to controversy. In January of 2020, he did something very strange and extremely messed up when he uploaded a video saying that his girlfriend, Alexia Murano, had been killed in a car crash. Of course, the outpouring of sympathy was huge for him because that would obviously be an incredibly tragic situation, but here's the thing, that didn't happen. Why would you lie about anyone passing away at all, let alone a real living person that people actually care about? It's just weird. Anyway, since that day, many people have come out to speak about Jay's alleged manipulative, abusive, and controlling behavior, more specifically towards women, especially those he was dating. There's a whole slew of other things that he has done that have caused controversy, such as his videos impersonating a police officer, his false claims of contacting dead celebrities through the spirit world, and also for spreading misinformation about the COVID-19 pandemic. His channel was officially terminated on March 12th of 2021, and he he took to Twitter to call YouTube the worst platform ever, and he has even threatened to sue. There's something about a grown man having a temper tantrum about the consequences of his own actions that is very satisfying to watch. In our number two spot today, we have Albrecht Studios. Albrecht Studios is a channel that reviews and comments on the Cartoon Network show Ninja Go Masters of the Spin Jitsu. In June of 2020, another channel called Just Too Bad exposed some shady behavior that Albrecht Studios was allegedly doing. Apparently, he was scamming his fans, who were of course mostly children. He would bait them into giving out credit card information for what he called giveaways. Well, they obviously weren't giveaways and he would apparently actually spend their money, which I suppose in most cases was actually the fans' parents' money. Aside from this, he also apparently leaked what at the time was the new Ninja Go Legacy set, and there are lots of rumors that have swirled of him being a creep as well. I obviously cannot confirm if any of this is true, but if it is, there is no doubt that some criminal charges could certainly be laid, especially in regards to the scamming. In our number one spot today, we have Playmate Tessie. Playmate Tessie, whose real name is Maya West, is a YouTuber and streamer who is also an OnlyFans user. She used to be known for her various videos where she could be seen cooking or baking or doing arts and crafts type things, but now she's mostly known for the insane controversy surrounding her. In January of 2021, she was recorded on a chat on Omegle making fun of a cancer patient, which is truly next level messed up. When called out for this, she made a tweet that read, if you don't want to be made fun of for having cancer, just don't effing have cancer, dumb pores. 
So it's obviously abundantly clear that she is in fact not a doctor. She was also the one who made and uploaded the video, so it was very clear that she saw nothing wrong with it and quite literally didn't care. She also had some horrifying things to say about people with autism. She said that they fake it for attention and that they should be sent to the gas chambers. I absolutely could not make this stuff up, you guys. Her dad is famous writer Jim West, and when he heard of all of this, he kicked her out of the house. She then proceeded to get her sister to make up lies about him and even went as far as to call the cops on him where she falsely told authorities that he was abusive, mentally ill, and had threatened to kill her with guns. After this whole thing was cleared up, she was staying in a hotel and decided to dox her dad. And just to add a few more things to the list in case it wasn't already long enough, she once said that racism should happen and then proceeded to make fun of Mexicans and Germans. She apparently has a history of scamming and blackmailing people, she's made transphobic comments, and she is also famous for harming her cat. So all in all, there's a lot to unpack here.